G'day, I'm James, and I'm a hobbyist maker. This is the Raoul, and it just earned me a $3,500 commission. More on that in a sec. I live in Sydney, Australia. Beautiful place. I'm also a scientist by trading. Not a tradie, and certainly no shipwright. This is my workshop. Hang on a second. This is my workshop. It ain't much, but I started from a blank canvas of absolutely nothing in this garage, and over the past four years, it's become my happy place. I've only got two rules here. Everything needs a home, and everything has to pay for itself. Woodworking can be an expensive hobby. So today, while I share parts of my latest commission rebuilding the deck of this boat, I'd like to go through with you how I make ends meet in the workshop so I'm not touching any of the family budget, and exactly how I ended up being asked to be Sydney's shoddiest shipwright. So you might be thinking that Fix It Fingers is kind of a weird name for a woodworking YouTube channel. Well, that's because I didn't start as a woodworker, I started as a handyman. When Wifey and I moved into our unit complex, I quickly found myself needing to do odd jobs around the place because we didn't have a reliable handyman and I am completely self-taught and I am basically the building manager here now. And to be honest, that is actually where most of my income comes from. However, even without the handyman side of the business, I would still be pretty much able to pay for all of my lovely woodworking tools using just my woodworking hobby. So if that sort of thing interests you, then by all means, learn how to fix things for other people. But that's a bit complicated and I'm not gonna to go too much into that today. Let's focus on how woodworking can make you some money. Oh, and um, if I was never explicit about it, the name's James Finger, so Fix It Fingers does kind of work. So let's quickly cover what is probably the first go-to of anyone who starts making things from wood, and that is creating things to sell at market and batching stuff out. I did try this once or twice with my other hobby, geocaching, where I made some little wooden coin holders and I did sell a few of them. They did pay for themselves, they made some profit, but I quickly learned it was not for me. I don't have a desire to do serving boards and chopping boards and all those other things that people usually make for the market sales or sell on Etsy and other stores like that. While you can experiment and it might be for you, there are lots of people who make money doing this. It's not something that I've done to generate a regular sort of income. On a side note of selling batched out things though, I have designed some sets of plans. Most of my plans are free, but my lovely workbench for instance, it was quite comprehensive and I did knock up some high quality plans for those. I sell those on Etsy and they've been moderately successful. So they've pretty much paid for all the materials and things that went into that workbench. So doing plans if you are a little bit further along your journey and you've got a bit of an idea of what works and what doesn't and you're handy with a CAD program like SketchUp, can be a good way of making a bit of passive income. Now this is certainly not for everyone and you don't require it to make money woodworking, but having a YouTube channel certainly can generate some income. I will put it this way though, while my woodworking pays for itself, the YouTube channel certainly does not. If I added up all of the hours that I had to put into editing, filming, learning how to edit and film, doing these voiceovers and everything else, I would be getting paid about three cents per hour. So only do YouTube if you expect to enjoy the process of video making. It is a completely separate hobby to your woodwork and not essential to make money from woodworking. Having said that, my YouTube channel is my primary income after the handyman work because I consider myself more of a content creator rather than a person who sells things made out of wood. See point RE market stall in my previous little discussion. You can make enough money to get the tools that you want in your workshop using YouTube if you dedicate time. For my first year of producing videos, I think I had 70 subscribers and a couple of hundred views. Fortunately, slowly over time, I have built an audience and the ad revenue that comes through and my very, very most generous members who contribute monthly to this channel now. Hello, everybody. Thank you again for your support. Or if you have a Patreon or something along those lines like other creators do, you can get a nice monthly income which you put into a kitty and use that to fund your woodworking hobby. I just cannot state enough though, YouTube is not a get rich quick scheme. There are some people who make it huge and do that quickly, but for the vast majority of us, it's an awful lot of hard work which you are doing for the love, but can help you support your hobby. It's all about multiple revenue streams, you might say, and YouTube is a good one for me. 
though I ain't going to be getting rich off it anytime soon. Related to the tubes and in a similar vein, but also probably expanding into other forms of social media like your TikToks and your Instagram and your Facebooks is collab and community. The Aussie Makers Group is something that I started up with a couple of mates and we have a couple of thousand members now and it's a great place for us to meet, discuss and solve problems, which has advanced my woodworking career and my skill set. It has also led to a few things like sponsorship deals, which again, for me is YouTube, but for others could be different social media platforms. In particular, I've worked closely with the Craig brand here in Australia and a company called Carbotech, who are one of our large woodworking stores. Through those commercial collaborations, I have been gifted a few tools, which I've been able to add to the arsenal effectively for free. And I have done some cash paid videos too. Once you have that audience and you've shown yourself to be a trustworthy source of information and have a bit of personality about you, then you will get companies approach you and you will have to decide whether or not you want to affiliate yourselves with particular tools, brands, etc. Me, I basically support things which I need for my workshop because that way, even if the partnership with the brand goes nowhere, I've ended up with a tool that I genuinely want and need to use. So sponsorships can be a good thing. Obviously, it's going to take you a little while before you get up to the point where they are being offered to you. But as we said, multiple revenue streams. Perhaps much more important than the few small page sponsorships I've done over the years has been my involvement with the Australian woodworking community. And that has led to most of my channel growth and therefore to most of my advertising revenue through YouTube. Just the other day, my great mate, Mark Dana, up there in Queensland, the pallet punter, he gave me a shout out, which ended up in me gaining hundreds of new subscribers. And the community here works that way. DIY for knuckleheads, Sumo's projects, Ash from the Monday Meetup Raw, now on YouTube, Vic from Down Under Woodworks. They've all done similar things for me in the past, which has given me small boosts along the way. They come as a direct result of being involved and everyone grows on the back of everyone else's success. After you subscribe to Mark's channel, I'd like to return the favour to an upcoming newish small Australian woodworking channel, Woodworking with Dash. Daniel is a box maker, ex-cabinet maker, and his imagination knows no bounds. If you're interested in woodworking, especially box making, you want to head over there, sub up, and check out his creative streak. It is jolly good fun. So work together with your community. Don't just put stuff out there and hope that other people are going to watch it. Get involved, chat to people, and you will find an audience finding you and therefore your woodworking revenue increasing at a faster rate than you can do it alone. Last but not least is have a website. Now there's an argument that websites are going by the by with social media and all the rest of it taking over. But this lovely boat that I am working on randomly now, called the Raoul, is my second job for the Woolwich Marina here in Sydney. And how they found me was that they simply went to Google and typed in Sydney North Shore Woodworker. And Fix It Fingers, despite my tiny presence, came up, they rang me, I did a small job for them for about $1,000 worth of work a few months ago. It went really well, so when they had a bigger job come up, They've contacted me now and I have just done the largest commission of my career to date and I've enjoyed every minute of it. Not only has it been the single most profitable thing that I have done in my woodworking career, it's basically paid for my workshop for six months or more. So I've now got a bit of a safety kitty that if I wanna do a passion project where I may need to spend some money on some more exotic materials than bed slats, I have that option available to me. The website has gained me more of an income than you know six 12 months of youtube could possibly do in one job alone if you are willing to do woodwork for other people and you have the skills and the tools and the experience to start to back that up then offer your services to the world if you get something you can't handle very simple you just say no I work full time. I don't have a huge amount of free time. So taking on this Raul project actually ate into my own personal woodworking a lot. So you've got to decide whether or not the enjoyment of it versus the paid income is worth it. It's a work-life balancing like anything else. All right, guys, that's how the Fix-It Fingers workshop generates some income, which allows me to enjoy my woodworking hobby. And I hope you take something away from these tips to apply to your own woodworking situation. 
Just remember, multiple revenue streams are the way to go. Sell some things, do some work for other people, do some YouTube or other social media stuff if you are so inclined. Just don't expect for it to go off overnight. It takes a lot of hard work, like anything else, to start making money doing things. But as long as you're enjoying yourself along the way, then you're already winning now, aren't you? By the by, if you're interested in the full build of the Raoult, I'll have a very woodworky type video going into detail of how I actually did this job and not just what it earned me.